Hey, it's Taisha. Thank you so much for watching this rebroadcast because I was trying to make an announcement that I was going live on YouTube. However, when I scheduled the video for later, YouTube is like uh, two people are already watching and I'm like, I don't even have a link yet. It was just like really crazy. I know my hair is looking a little bit wild. It was rainy today, but it's all right. There we go. This video was on my mind and it's just inspired me to record this video today and I just want to say hi to everybody who's in here make sure you give me a thumbs up let me know who's in here and if you can and I'll mention this a few times if you can help me with this video if you can post a comment um, just helping someone out with a link to um, a resource for um, like the veterans uh, helpline or the um, the suicide prevention line or things like that if you could provide a resource to help someone who comes to this video for um for like help if they may have depression and I'm not saying this video is to diagnose anybody with depression so I put on depressed mood and sadness because we all go through it and there's nothing wrong with it you know stuff happens but if you could help me out and just post a resource for someone who comes and watches this video I know my surrounding looks a little little different because I am still hotel living I have made it safely to Georgia and um I've been uh, going around looking for places to live and so I have found one place that like fit all of my criteria. Of course it takes a minute to finalize everything and get everything done but I'm so excited. So hopefully by the next week you'll see my new place and I'll be getting settled here in Georgia. I'm so happy and thank you for everybody for helping me get to 10,000 subscribers. That just happened uh, last, last night, yesterday. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> thank you for watching my little old channel with random content. But I think now I'm starting to find my direction with my YouTube channel and where I want to go. And I want to just keep it the same. I want to continue to just upload what is sent to me, ideas for my subscribers, also what's in my heart to create. And this channel was so important to me because my son, he told me to do it. He's like, mom, you should do a YouTube channel. And when my son told me to do it, it just, I wanted to make him proud, but it was a beautiful outlet for me during a time when I was so sad. I was stressed out. You know, he had just went back to Hawaii. I mean, he had just left Hawaii to go uh, to Virginia. And I really miss my baby. I'm just like, okay, I know, you know, he's doing great things with his dad. And he has a lot more opportunities over there as far as, you know, track and field. And, you know, that was my way to stay creative and stay productive, you know, during my time of sadness. And, of course, it continued. And that's where the questions had came in. When I just uploaded the video about leaving Bremerton, Washington, uh, many people emailed me like, hey, I live in this place here. And I totally related to what you said. What you said is not a lie. It's so true. You know, any advice on I still have either a few more months or a few more years until I'm able to get out of this place, any advice and things like that. And that's where the idea for this video came from. It's like, Taisha, really get this topic out there. But <clears throat> also I took a course today and it was on being resilient. And it just tied in everything that was on my freaking mind. So I'm sitting there, I'm listening to the lecture, but I'm taking all these notes like, oh my gosh, I can do this. I, I gotta, gotta get this information, this information out. So um, tonight I wanna, I wanna tell you like how I remain resilient in a toxic environment and I want to help you and encourage you on, on overcoming a depressed mood and sadness. I don't like, you know, when people have to get labeled depressed or things like that. And that's why, you know, I took up psychology because I'm not really a fan of psychotropic drugs. I don't like when, when people get prescribed drugs. Of course, I don't, I don't know. If situation dictates that physician may take that course to help that patient. And many people have had success with certain psychotropic drugs. However, me, I do not like them because there's always side effects. And when something is prescribed, your next appointment is like weeks later. So when you come back, it's like all the side effects that could have happened. You know, it's kind of hard to get back in and talk about those things. So me, I love, um, and I'm sorry, we hear this noise, it's like airplanes and stuff. But um, yeah, so when I believe that when people have issues and problems, talking them out with your peers or talking out with, with someone, you know, who has, you know, the gift 
to help you get through it. And I'm not saying that every person that has a degree and all these different trainings and acronyms behind their names are necessarily qualified to help you with what you got with, with what you got going on. And I'm not ashamed to admit I've seen a lot of psychologists because that's just the nature of what we've all been through. We've all had some, some sort of trauma. We've all uh, seen or been through things that the average person are, does not, are not privy to. So you have to, you know, talk that out. And your mental health is so important. I really hate, you know, back in my early military days. And then when I went into law enforcement, going to go see the city dock or going to i think in portsmouth it was the seventh floor at portsmouth naval hospital it was kind of embarrassing and people would laugh at you for doing that you know but it's like you'll have people shun you for taking care of your mental health who don't even go and get their six month dental checkups you know what i'm saying like fool you don't even floss your teeth but you want to tell me what's going on with my mind okay so there's no shame in going to um to see someone about your, your your mental health and i just want to say greetings to everyone who's in here marco polo hey what up did you move from seattle heck yes i did i've been gone for it's been a week now yes yeah, been a week i left last saturday david the medic how are you thank you for being here isaiah i totally agree i'd rather go to a more holistic natural route for treatment with with mental health and disclaimer for this video I do not have depression that's why i said depressed mood that happens you can get a, you can be blue and i talked about you know seasonal adjustment disorder i make sure to stay away from like you know saying different things that can kind of get you hemmed up and i think that's why a lot of people shy away from going to get um like mental health because of the labels oh if if i'm depressed they'll take my kids or if i'm depressed i won't be able to get a job or if i'm depressed you know things like that if it's looked at a negative but what I must say is um, certain, it's a certain level to it. You know, um, I just bought another firearm a couple of weeks ago and on the form from ATF, you know, alcohol, tobacco, firearms, and explosives, you have to be, I think, believe it's the term is adjudicated by a court. You have to be deemed by a court to be mentally insane, incapable, you know, just totally out there to not be able to you know have a firearm or be disqualified from certain jobs and stuff like that um recently i had did a questionnaire for a certain job and when it asks like have you sought help from a mental health professional and it's like you can check no if you went for if you were self-referred you can check no if you were a victim of a crime I'm more a victim of a certain circumstance you know pretty much the the um the gray area or that area where you're able you're it's it's becoming more and more accepted to do your mental health checkups and to take care of yourself mental health wise and i believe that when you know you have to be self-referred or if they have to go and get a court order to take you into custody to make you get mental treatment, you know, that's when it becomes, you know, an issue where you may have to explain yourself a little more, but being self-referred and using the outlets that are available, that's a perfectly fine reason to go. It's a perfectly good thing. So, um, as I stated, uh, the, the messages I was getting just asking me, how did I stay resilient? And, you know, the area that I was in up in Washington and just, you know, just the past couple of years, you know, I had a lot going on. I had a lot of stuff going on. I would say for the time I shaved off my hair <laughs> up until now. And if this light goes off, don't don't get scared. I don't know how much battery is on my um, my light. So, yeah, and I haven't charged that this light pack up in a while. But um, I just wrote down a couple of things that that came to mind that helped me remain resilient and you know overcome that you know depressed mood that sadness the blues you know just th being able to stay or being able to thrive in that toxic environment and the first thing i have on here is said have a goal and my goal for being in that environment it was strictly survival i'm like taisha when i started getting sad or you know really just you know just in a bad place i'm like you're here you have a goal get your money and go home you know and i thought about why i was doing it i'm here so that i could you know 
um, fund some other interests I have, take care of my son, you know, have money, um, avoid living in intense city. And I know that this the screen keeps adjusting whenever I move my hands. Let me turn, turn my light up to not live in tent city, you know, things like that. So I'm like, it's strictly survival. You're here for survival. Get, get this stuff done and move on to the next place. You're not meant to be here forever. Um, the next one was know what your problems are and, you know, just have a solution. Know your problems, have a solution. And, when 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 um when i looked at different things like, okay this is a problem either i can run from it i can let it beat me but i can find a solution and this problem has presented itself so that i can you know face it head on and that was a way of empowering myself because you know in my in my military days if something wasn't working we would, we would go and troubleshoot it. We would go get a part and fix it so that it would, the solution would be so that it can work again. And whenever I was faced with something, I'm like, there is a solution for this. And the solution is not giving up. The solution is not me taking myself out of the, you know, problem completely. And let me get this out there too. You know, I've never had thoughts of harming myself or suicide, things like that. And speaking of suicide really quick, um, I had participated in this walk around um, the Lincoln Memorial in DC. I took my son, we went there, I think it was like 2013, it was called Out of Darkness. And um, when I was walking it, they, they had us write down names of people that we knew who, who had committed suicide. And around this time, I remember back in, I think it was 2011, I had a coworker on the police department. He was a sweet man, oh my gosh, like, if I wasn't already in a relationship at the time, I would have dated him. But he was the first person to compliment me after I got my braces off. And um, this out of the blue, next thing I knew, uh, we saw on Facebook, he had committed suicide. And what he did was he um, he was in a relationship and a relationship ended when he didn't want it to. So he took his ballistic vest and put it behind him in the bed and shot himself in the chest with his, his duty weapon. And he put his ballistic vest under him because he was in an apartment and he didn't want the bullet to go through the floor. And I remember when it came out, you know, we were all heartbroken. It came out of nowhere. And I remember I was working midnight shift. I got off work and they were asking us to volunteer to come and clean out his apartment. And I remember when I went there, you know, it was just, it was so heartbreaking. His mother was there and his mom, oh my gosh, this man looked just like his mother. Sweet sweet beautiful woman and it just i i had actually started getting sick i got sick and i was not able to make it to his funeral but i think about him all the time around this time so i felt as though it was really important to do this this video as well but is that he is love like he was loved he has so much love around him it's just you know that one situation got the, the got the better of him and he's not here but you know, if you can show someone that they are loved and they have so much support and that they are needed, you know, it's like, no, you are needed. You know, we can't be without you. So I would say if you have someone that you may notice different signs in them or they may say some things that, you know, alert you that they may be in a depressed mood or sadness or prone to suicide, you know, just reassure them that, you know, well, first, make sure you're safe, you know, make sure you're safe, get outside help, you know, that's that's needed. But just reassure them that they are needed. You know, this problem is not the end of the world. You know, you will be with them to find a solution and get through it. One of the things that came to mind on how I remain resilient in toxic environments and, and overcome like a depressed mood and also, you know, sadness, you got to be selfish. You have to be selfish, okay? And I find it that you may be wearing yourself thin, caring for other people, doing for others, putting everything first before yourself. One thing I hated about the Navy when I was active duty, and I was a young woman. I joined when I was 17, and I was there until I was 23. The Navy comes first. Navy comes first. Well, damn it, if I'm not here, you know, the Navy ain't coming first if I'm not here, you know. So I want to put my damn self first and, you know, my family. But through it all, you got to put yourself first. Everything else can wait. And I know this this um, this example is used a lot. When you're on a, when you're on an airplane and the air pressure drops, you put your mask on first, then you help everybody and help everybody else. You gotta be selfish. 
put yourself first. And what I mean by, by being selfish, it's all about you. You make sure that you are eating properly. And when I say eating properly, you may think, okay, three square a day. No, three square a day don't, don't mean a pack of squares and, you know, a McGriddle for breakfast, um, some, some, some tacos from Taco Bell for lunch, and a uh, Little Caesars pizza for dinner. No, <laughs> that food is so empty of nutrients. You know, you're going to go for a while, but it's going to start, you know, wearing on you. And then you also make sure you, you get your sleep. I actually have a bottle of melatonin in there. I have the melatonin gummies. I went to Walmart yesterday. I'm like, let me go ahead and get some melatonin because I'm still switching my sleep schedule. I've been on a uh, Pacific Standard Time for so long, but I had weird hours when I was over there. And now, you know, driving across all of the time zones in the US, something I have to adjust, I have to get on a schedule now. So my sleep, I've been having the best sleep since being here. Oh my gosh. Even I would say even that first night when I slept at the rest stop in California, <laughs> that was still the best sleep I've had in a while. You got to get your sleep. I would say um, just get into a habit. I would say as soon as it gets dark outside, like, look, this one, everything is shutting down. I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to take a bath. I'm going to do my little evening ritual and I'm going to sleep. You know, you have to make sure you get some sleep. Everything else can wait. People are like, well, I have children. My son, he he knew when Will of Fortune went off, it's time to go to bed. I'm actually watching Will of Fortune right now, but that's how my, my grandmother did us. When when Will of Fortune came came off or went off, she wrote down her, her numbers. I was usually sleep before Jeffrey went off and, and I was sleep until my mom came to pick us up. So, you know, establish that order. When I when I'm laying down, everybody is laying down. Um stay in shape. I've probably put on about an, an extra five pounds, but that's usually what happens. Like I fluctuate, but now I'm starting to know. It's like, yeah, I'm tall. I wear it well, but you know, it was days where I was so burnt out, you know, just mental and just, you know, just, just everything was just wearing on me where I was like, okay, my intentions will be that morning to go to the gym. I'll have my gym clothes in the car. But once I got off and I'm like, you know what, F this, I'm going home and getting to bed. So when I would get home, I'm like, look, just get on the floor, do some some crunches, and then I got my yoga wheel. And if my my, my one buddy is watching my yoga bench, not yoga bench, <laughs> my yoga bench. As you see, I'm doing uh, I'm I'm inverting and you know back bends and all that. So that's what I did when I just I, I got home. As long as it was something to stay active that you know help my body, you know just stay resilient and took my my mind off of the daily rigmarole. Um, build a support system. My sister, my sister Shauna, oh, she made sure that we video chatted every Sunday, every Saturday or Sunday. And that was just us seeing each other. We can both have on our bonnets, you know, but we're chatting and talking and laughing and reminiscing. And I love my sister because she never excluded me. I mean, even though, you know, after a while I stopped observing holidays, my sister made sure that I was on video chat every holiday she had at the house or when she went to the nursing home to, to visit my grandmother, either my sister or my niece had me on, on video chat, you know, maintaining that connection with, with, with family and being included. So that, although I was far away distance wise, that's one way that, you know, people still kept me close. Stay productive. Oh my gosh. That's where, like I said, my channel came into, you know, that my channel is like my saving grace. And like I said, my son told me to do it. I love him and I thank him for that. But also too productive, like whatever was on my mind and I just make a video about it. If you look at my, my cooking videos and stuff, a lot of that is like still being creative. I was being a hermit, just being in the house, but I'm like, this is where I want to be. This is my safe place. But I turned my house where I had many different activity centers and I had to be careful because I could have easily became a hoarder, <laughs> but I had different activities to keep me engaged and, you know, just really keep my mind cycling where I didn't have time to focus on what was stressing me out or stressing over the bad. Either when I go into the kitchen, I was trying to recreate a copycat meal from, you know, some, some fast food place. I had my books over here where I was reading. Even if I just read one chapter of something, I'll read it, put it down, think about it. 
go over here, watch TV, go over here, do some yoga, look out the window, you know, things like that. I always has something to keep me engaged. And that's so important. Um, if you look at things, um, I actually took a mental health day. I was so stressed out one day. And that's when I actually went and registered for my trademark, Timonics. It, it was something on my mind, but I was just sitting there just drain and i'm like you know what let's see how to get a trademark i watched a couple of youtube videos and then i went to the u.s trademark and patent office and that's when i got my trademark for timonics and i've been focused on growing timonics that's if you don't know what timonics is that's my personal defense uh brand where i have different products to empower you to, to be your own um to be your own first responder defend yourself as everything from holsters um personal alarms um, tactical flashlights and so much more is coming like i said i'm so happy like that's that's my baby and you have to stay productive stay creative so when you look back you could have spent all that time worrying and being sad and letting your issues get the best of you or you can like like counter it you know like wow i did all this in that span of time and um um i beat whatever i was going through that that circumstance did not get the best of me Another example I have here is run your mouth. Don't be silent. As you see, <laughs> I run my mouth on my channel. Um, I talk to people. I was really, really hesitant to let people know what I was going through because you don't want to ruin somebody else's day. They're like, oh, yeah, this is happening. I'm like, oh, this is my issue, my issue, my issue. But you need somebody to vent to. So someone gives you that permission to vent to them and, you know, just unload on them you know use it use it but be careful who you vent to <laughs> um because some folks are, are, are there to run a mouth about your business but some people are there to really help you out and be there for you and even after your 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 issue is over with they still have that high esteem and respect for you those are the people you need to to keep close and um an example i came up with about well it's not really be careful who you vent to but it's kind of I don't know. I just put it out there. I had went to go see a, a therapist. They were a master's degree level therapist while I was in Hawaii when I was going through, you know, all the stuff with, you know, the isolation, the domestic violence and stuff. And I was a military spouse. So on the check-in sheet for, for services, they were so concerned about the, the active duty spouse's information, their command, their job title, all this. So then when it came to the spouse, it's like your name, your DOD ID number, your address, and that's it. So then it's, it breaks down into the questions. It's like, um, have you ever had thoughts of killing someone? And I put yes. <laughs> now let me explain. I put down yes. And I just kept filling out the rest of the questions. And I noticed when I turned it into the receptionist, they kind of looked over it and kind of did one of these. They put it in the confidential folder. And then when the therapist came up, gave it to them. And then I noticed that when we went back to talk, there was somebody else in the room. And they're like, can you explain to me? Like, you're, are you having thoughts to hurt yourself? I'm like, hell no, I love myself. You have, are you having thoughts to, are, are you having thoughts to harm other people? I'm like, no, but you checked. You, ha you have had thoughts to harm people. I'm like, yeah, I was a police officer and I thought about it on the use of force, you know, uh, <laughs> for use of force. Like every day I thought, I thought to myself and I prepared myself, I may have to take a life to protect my own and somebody else's. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> so yeah, that's what it, you have to kind of be careful because some people can take what you admit to and kind of run with it. But I'm like, yeah, I had to think about that all the time, you know, for use of force. But um, <laughs> not saying that that's, that's funny, but just that their reaction, like, okay, yeah, spouses have jobs too. And, you know, it, a lot of times we are, we're more, you know, um, qualified and we, we have a career in addition to the spouse's military career. In my case, I was in the military and on the civilian side. So I'm like, yeah, um, you have to also put some work in. It's enough, whatever your problem may, may be, you can say I'm in a bad relationship, but if you just wallow in, I mean, it's good that you identify I'm in a bad relationship and you wallow in it, but you have to put some work in to get out of it. It may be to where, um, okay, let me distance myself from this person. Let me not get this person pregnant. Let me, um, let me go ahead and 
you know, if I'm living with this person, let me go ahead and get myself independent to go live on my own and get out of this toxic relationship. You may be in a shitty job like I was. And, you know, I was filling out at minimum three applications a day to get the hell up out of there. I'm like, I got to go. So then I listen to other people. They're like, I hate this job. I hate this job. I'm like, well, what are you doing to get up out of here? Oh, you know, I'm here because of this. I'm like, look, please, I'm out. When, when I when I get the opportunity, I'm out, player. <laughs> and shout out to everybody that, you know, I used to, used to work with who was cool with me, who was cool. Um, let's see the comments. Let's see who is here. I know I've been rambling for a little while. He said, Isaiah, I agree with you as well. I prefer natural routes. I would get there in just a second. Thank you for bringing it up. We all get angry is what you do with that anger. We're all one action away from being committed. Heck yes. And that's why that support system is so important. That support system because stuff will tick you off. And I found, I find as though now, you know, that I'm, I'm in my thirties, the way I handle stress and when people piss me off is different than in my twenties. In my twenties, yes, I have to be careful because one wrong move, you know, would land my picture in the newspaper, you know, officer Taisha Essex, you know, did this and got a mug shot of me down at Hampton Road City Jail. I didn't eat that. But nowadays it takes a lot more to get me upset like i've just been so so calm i think i don't even know i don't even know what really can tick me off like i had a little bit of stress earlier but i just talked talked it out and you know told you know the the appropriate people what was going on and they're like oh yeah we got you i'm like cool you know I, i've literally had no stress for the last two weeks. And this is such a foreign feeling to me because I'm always on high alert. I'm always watching my back. I'm always, you know, hesitant of trusting people a little too much, you know, so I'm really guarded. But, you know, I'm not saying I'm letting my guard down completely, but it feels good to kind of relax for a little bit. You know, it feels really, really good. And when I video chatted with my son today, he's like, Mom, you look good. The sun's been doing you good. I'm like, yeah, I feel really great. You know, this is the first time like, I can get on a conversation with people and I'm like, I have nothing bad to report. I mean, nothing bad. My hotel here, it's lost power for the last two days. And when it happened, I just laughed. And I just, when it happened, I was already asleep. So I woke up, I'm like, it's really dark in here. And I was like, oh, power's out, I'm going back to sleep. It really didn't bother me. <laughs> so I'm just really, really calm. Black beauty always, how are you? All things, not a gene. I have I, I have all of those tinctures. I also have valerian root. That is a good one. Thank you. Real gamer, I'm listening. Sister, you're right. Put yourself first. Put yourself first. I'm continuing to learn this after years of codependency and being a scapegoat as a kid. Oh my gosh. I wish you the best. And if you need anything, let me know. Daryl, good evening. How are you? And thank you for the compliment. And from VA. Happy birthday. And from VA. Oh my gosh, you just don't know. And from VA really, really, really gives me confirmation on, you know, the things that I'm doing. Cause I I when when I do a video, I know this may sound, you know, selfish, but we gotta be selfish at times. I often go back and watch my own videos to help myself get through stuff. You know, if that, that makes sense, because I'll put out information or I'll put up a video of a happy time. And when I'm having a tough time, I go back and revisit it and kind of, you know, at, at a point in time, I was getting really numb where, you know, I was totally detached from a lot of stuff. I'm like, I don't know how it feels to be happy. I don't know how it feels to have peace. So I would just go back and I'm like, you know, this, this, this time is when I was happy. And I just want to say air from VA. Thank you so much for the super chat as always and i was gonna say happy birthday to you i'm trying to get in here and make you a mod because i've been meaning to do that for a while i just forgot if not i will take care of it uh when i get done from here but thank you so much you may already be a moderator if not let me know if that works but thank you so much air from va man you are my dude mr 757 so yes you are so great Leisha, I'm late to the party, but I made. I'm so glad you're here. TJ, the universe will lead you if you listen. I needed to hear that. Absolutely. Love the fact that you're no longer celebrating these pagan holidays. Shout out to Dr. Barashango. I shock a Musa Barashango. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I wish I had more lectures and videos of him because he talks to me like he is just a grandfather or a great uncle, just dropping knowledge and wisdom all the time about you know, religion. I was listening to uh, his video when I was driving through Tennessee. It's on YouTube. It's called The Wonderful Kushites. I haven't finished that, but it just starts off powerful. 
I gotta, gotta talk about him more because that is just my dude. Dr. Barashango is my dude. Shout out to Brother Righteous a lot because he's the one who put, put me onto it and Brother uh, Olmec at um, House of Consciousness. But I just want to say thank you to everybody for being here. Oh my gosh, like this is a really important topic to me because this is why I wouldn't spend spent the majority of my GI Bill on a psychology degree. Although, you know, I'm not using it in my professional life. I didn't really go for that reason. It really, my degree has really helped me in my personal life. It's really helped me be a better sister, a better friend, a better mother, just a better person to people that I come into contact with. And it's really helped me, you know, define some things that I go through. Also emotions, reactions I might have, um, behaviors that other people have and that's how it's helped me in my personal life and I believe that you know yes I can't measure that measure that monetarily but the genuine connections and friendships I have that's my reward so for me serving five years two months and eight days <laughs> that's what I have to give to you so thank you so much but um coming back I was talking about um where are we at where are we at Okay, positive self-talks, positive self-talks. And I know this is, a lot of people don't believe this whole, you know, law of attraction thing and stuff like that. But sometimes you really have to fake it until you make it. And like I said earlier, you know, while I was in Washington, while I was over there, it was for survival. I'm like, Taisha, you know, you could be called, calling up the ex-husband and seeing what he doing and getting back with him. I'm like, no, buddy. I'm so going to go ahead and get myself up, go get dressed and go to work. <laughs> so I also use humor. I use humor and sarcasm a lot. Like, I think that's my nature of being a, a Sagittarius is that we're very sarcastic and I have a smart ass mouth. <laughs> I will go ahead and admit it. <laughs> but um, positive self-talks. I did a video on this channel about my ancestor altar. And my ancestor altar is right there at my front door. So as I'm putting on my shoes, because I don't wear shoes in my house, I'm putting on my shoes, I'm talking talking to my ancestors, and I'm like, ancestors, we're one day closer to Georgia. We're getting up out of here. We're, we're one day closer. And then when I come back, you know, after I completed this really tough day full of all types of BS, I'm like, ancestors, we're one day closer. And so when the day came when um, I made my announcement, I'm like, I'm out of here. And I came home, opened up my, my front door, my ancestor altar was there. When I'm home and I'm able to watch, you know, the area, I have a white candle burning there all the time. So when I open the door, I'm like, ancestors, we out. <laughs> so it was just those positive self-talks. It's like I, my, my spiritual side really came into work and that's what, what kept me uplifted, even though, you know, I was really alone. Like, I, I had a handful of people that I can trust. Shout out to Kim, Lanessa, who else was out there? Um, my sorority sister, um, who else? A lot of people who I could really, really rely on and trust. Lisa um, just, just was the best, but, you know, I just kept my spiritual side. You know, my ancestors are going to bring me out of this situation and get me back and that really helped me that really helped, helped me a lot and look at where i'm at and speaking of the ancestors real quick sidebar so i was at the post office on saturday and i'm looking at my essex family reunion group and because you know we we are communicating there shout out to all of the family and because our family reunion is in atlanta this year there we go <laughs> but also my um my maternal side of the family they're also having a reunion in Atlanta this year. So I see um, a lady comment, and shout out to my cousin Jasmine. Her last name was, um, her last name is McMullen. And I'm like, hold on, which group am I in? Because McMullen is my maternal side. And I'm looking like, oh, I'm in the Essex group. Well, how'd she get over here? So I messaged her like, hey, are you a McMullen by way of Conyers, Georgia? She comes back, I married a McMullen, my husband, he's from Macon. I'm like, oh my gosh, let me just fi fi find out that my paternal side of my family and my maternal side have become, have, have came together through marriage and everybody's here in Georgia. So I'm just like, just beyond myself. So I've been back and forth talking to new family members, adding new family members, you know, just trying to piece this together. And I'm like, wow, I've been wanting a family 
for the last 16 years since I jo since I joined the Navy I've always went to different places by myself and I've really been like I want family I want family I'm tired of being by myself you know I make connections through friendships or co-workers but I want more family and look at what's happening so that would be an upcoming video you know I'm taking my time because I have so much time here like I'm not here on vacation where I leave in a week or anything like that it's like I can really figure this out and I think this is going to make for a great great documentary so stay tuned for that and shout out to everybody um like I said positive self-talks gratitude you know gratitude after a while I was I was like I'm thankful that I'm not living in tent city I'm grateful that you know um I'm not eating off the streets I'm grateful for a lot of things so I had to really look I'm not, I'm not saying I don't know I kind of don't like when people say what bad things people did to you made you stronger because it's kind of you know letting them off easy off easily for that bad behavior it was your resilience and your perseverance that got through those tough tough situations so i would say in turn you know just really celebrate yourself like yes i made it through this i'm strong i can do this you know give your yourself that that positive self talks next one is resi resiliency being resilient if i'm pronouncing that right resiliency resilient and in my layman's terms what that is is the bounce back because you can you, you're gonna go through stuff you really are you, you're gonna go through stuff but it's how you recover and whatever means you use to get through it you know if you're still if if it's your religion that gets you through it if you're if it's your spirituality but always give credit to yourself and your ability to overcome okay um i know a lot, a lot of people they start off i have no power i'm so weak i'm not worthy that's just negative you know you gotta give yourself credit where credit is due you did that you overcame it you fought back you had the courage you had the perseverance you had the bounce back and as long as long as you get through it it doesn't break you and you don't look like what you went through now i will admit this morning when i put this part right here i had to you know cut out a gray hair i'm like oh shoot stuff that gave me gray hair but you know i can still lie about my age the bounce back it's okay to have a tough day like i said how i get through stuff is i use sarcasm make a joke about it um humor you know just stuff stuff like that that's how i get i get through stuff i laugh at it in my mind Oh my gosh, if they ever came out with a device to read people's minds, if they hook it up to me for an entire day, oh wow, <laughs> I would probably become a millionaire because I can charge admission and people would just keep replaying it and that's when I finally go go viral, you know? Um, also, too, you need to reach out. If you need to, reach out for help. If you have to go to the ER, you know, my sister, she, she, she works for an agency where they have a mobile crisis unit. That's That's really cool. Um, like I said, if y'all can help me out and put different uh, avenues, excuse me, different avenues for help, such such as the, the Veterans Crisis Line, or um, I know on the civilian side, it's um, the Employee Assistance Program, or the National Suicide Hotline. Um, if your local community has, has, has something available, just please comment that for me. But after this video, I'll be going into the description and typing in different uh, programs that I know about because it's, it's, it's all about providing resources. Yes, you can, come, you can come here and vent too. You can email me. You can talk about it, you know, but I want you to be safe, okay? And, you know, um, I, I, I had a person that had reached out to me back up in Washington and I let it be known, wherever I go, I'm all about mental health. I'm all about fighting back. Um, if there's people who prey on other people's weakness, I'm going to battle them, you know, and we're going to stand up to them. And I won't let the little person, I'm, you're not little, we're not little, but when a bully sees something that they could, you know, pounce on and, you know, attack us on, we gonna fight back, okay? Because <laughs> I, I hate bullies. I really do. Thank you so much, Air from VA, the, the Sapper Response DOD Safe Hotline. Thank you so, so, so much. Like I said, Ed, Mr. 757 is the man. Um, but yeah, I had someone that called me on my, my day off. Now, for the thing of it is, I, I kind of wear this hat. Like, yes, I'm Taisha, but this person was slick. They was like, Taisha, I know you are an ordained minister. I'm like, yeah, but uh, 
what you want? <laughs> I'm like, do you want to get married? What do you want to do? They're like, yo, um, I'm just feeling really drained. I need to talk some talk to somebody professional. I know I can talk to you about it. Only if you're wearing your ordained minister hat. I'm like, okay. What eventually happened, I, they asked me to take them to the hospital and sit with them. And what I did was, I was like, okay, I got up, got dressed. I'm like, you're not dry, I'm not going to pick you up. And so when we're on the phone, I'm like, when was the last time time you ate something? I don't even know. I'm just, I'm like, okay, so I'm, I'm in my kitchen. I'm getting, you know, different things, putting it in a bag. I'm on my way. I'll be right over here. And I'm like, look, while we're going to the hospital, eat this food, okay? You're good. And I was so honored this person trusted me, you know, to help them get resources but also to explain it to them because it can be scary people think like oh they're gonna put me in a straight jacket with rubber walls and i'm like no <laughs> that's not gonna happen you know and i'm here with you so that if, if you have any questions or if it may seem like they're talking over you or jumping to conclusions about you i'm here to like no we're gonna slow it down okay i'm gonna slow that down so that was just just something i was really really honored that this person had, had reached out to me so, um, right now, I'm going to, before I get to the dangerous behaviors to avoid and look for, uh, my beautiful, beautiful subscribers and viewers, thank you so much. You mentioned different natural remedies. So I did a video, like I said, I did this video about the seasonal adjustment disorder and I used the, um, the thumbnail for this video. And that was, I was, I was showing someone the different herbs I was taking at the time to help me like have a better mood and fight, you know, sadness naturally. Because one thing you don't want to do is, is, is go to escapism. And I know in psychology, there's this thing called a placebo effect. Some things can be a placebo effect, but it just shows the power that you have to overcome something naturally. And that's why I do not subscribe to psychotropic drugs. I really don't because the side effects, they're not tested, and I don't believe it's one size fits all. And I don't believe in, you know, putting a drug in people when we could, you know, fix something via, you know, talking it out, peer-to-peer -peer counseling, you know, natural remedies such as, you know, sunshine. Oh my gosh, the sun is just so beautiful here in Georgia. The sky is just blue. It wasn't today. It was rainy and foggy, but it's okay. It, the fog and the rain looks better here, okay? <laughs> but I'm going to show you a few things that um, that I'm taking and that I, some of these I've been taking for a while. So um, the first thing I talked about that you'll see in my thumbnail is this supplement here called Kava. Called Kava. Yeah. And like I said, um, there was it was a course I went to where the instructor was like giving out misinformation about Kava. But Kava has been used for, you know, quite some time in the Poly Polynesian Islands. And I remember seeing it in Hawaii at this store called Down to Earth. And what it is, it is um, the Kava root. And what it is, it's a, it's a calming and stabilizing. It's like a anxiety uh soother and stuff like that so what you do is and of course with all this con consult a medical uh, professional before taking notes. don't take my word for it you know i'm just taking about my experience and things like that i will never tell you to do something that i wouldn't do but um how i started taking it so you um excuse me i thought i had a, a, a cup of water somewhere hold on i'll be right back i'm thirsty as i know it Okay, doesn't matter. Thank you for waiting. So what I do is I take a dropper full and I put it in a full glass of water. And this is when I'm not taking melatonin. And it's really good. I just put it one thing, one dropper full in like about eight ounces of water. Take it to the head, and then, <laughs> and then like it really helps you. Like if 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 you're feeling just really like you can't calm down um, or. You know, kind of like that feeling when, when you take a pre-workout and the pre-workout just won't stop working. <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes because my mind is like on a thousand miles a minute. I'm thinking about this, 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 and that. But it's like you have to slow down. You know, you have to be in that moment. So this really helps me out. Kava is really, really good. And um, I got this at Fred Meyer back in Washington in the natural food section. It ranges between like a $14 and $17. I think it's $14 when it's on sale and $17 at regular price. And what is my date on this? 
best before yeah so it, it lasts pretty pretty much a while this is uh good until september 2023 but kava is really good you can can order it on amazon there's also um a natural company that my um my ohana my my family back in hawaii uh, they were like yeah we've been using this for years and they gave me a link so i'll go through my text messages and i'll post that um, this other supplement that I take, and I just start taking this around December, but I was taking it, taking kind of too much at first. So I was taking like a, a vial full, what do call this, a vial full a day. Now, this is a red ginseng. This is red ginseng. It came in a little pack and I found it on clearance. You know, I love clearance stuff. And because, you know, I'm a packer, I buy like a whole bunch of them. And red ginseng, you can Google it. It'll be, um... You put down like benefits of red ginseng for women, benefits of red ginseng period, benefits of red ginseng for men. And for what I can remember on, on the top of my head, um, it's used to um, beat anxiety. It, it helps with anxiety, you know, depression and stuff like that. And then um, it helps you with your brain function, sleep, provides energy. Because one thing I noticed when I'm going through a situation, it's like I'm, I'm in that warrior mode. And that's how I was described. Um, an, uh, a supervisor described me as having the warrior mindset when I was a police officer. Because I was always getting into fights. Like, people just didn't take me serious. Like, they'll see me. I'm like, oh, we about to fight. I'm like, God damn. And I'm always in a fight. So uh one of my well a couple of fights were on video but the last one that was that was that was really bad when um i was on the sidewalk fighting and you know i got punched in the head a lot and um they described me as having the warrior mindset and it's like you're always on that edge you're ready to go but doing that all the time because you're trying to think about what your opponent is gonna do so that you're not caught you know, a surprise, and you also want to prepare yourself for what might happen. And that's really draining. Like, once you get down with that, you're really burnt out. You're really done. So I found myself a lot of times, like, I have just no freaking energy. And I'll find, like, I'm sleeping my entire weekend away because I'm just, I've been going to hunt it the whole time. Well, where, where this, this ginseng came in, it was really good. Like, I noticed within, like, the first couple of days, I'm like, okay, you know, I was I was really creative, and I, and I'm I'm not saying you're guaranteed these results. Like like I said, you need to Google, you need to go ahead and seek a medical professional. You know your body chemistry is different. Me, I just figure I survived eating mess deck food for five years, so I don't really think there's anything that can really get to me. <laughs> and um, but yeah, this ginseng was really good. The only uh, side, I won't say side effect. The only thing I noticed is like I said, when I was taking too much of it, I was taking one vial a day. My, and I know there's guys listening, but I already told y'all about, you know, me and taking out my birth control and stuff. I noticed that it made my menstrual cycle really heavy, like out of nowhere, just, oh my gosh, like what the hell? So yeah, that's one thing I, I would warn other women about. So now I probably would do one of these a month, okay, because it was like, I'm like, damn, you know, <laughs> and I'll go, I know guys like, oh my gosh, earmuffs, but hey, I'm a real woman, okay, I'm ce celebrating being a real woman, and things happen, and nowadays, when I go to the store, or whatever, if I need a feminine product, I'm going to start doing a mug just like this, like, right on top of my cart, I'm like, look, I'm a real woman, okay, I was, I was born, I'm a real woman, okay, god damn it, I gave birth, okay, check, check out these stretch marks, <laughs> and, um, other supplements I took, I have here, I have a B12 and B6, <laughs> <laughs> B12 and B6, you know, it's all about energy and um, immune support. I know there's another supplement what puts all these together called B Complex. It just at the time I couldn't find it, so B12 and B6. I remember when when I, I was in Hawaii, I used to get B12 injections or yeah, uh when I was on the police department, I got B12 injections and I had to inject myself and y'all know I do not like getting my blood drawn I don't get needles like I have such a fear of becoming a junkie like I I'm so scared of needles and stuff like that like I even get nervous around my mom when she has to you know check her insulin and stuff it just makes me so nervous because I don't like needles you know but I had to give myself an injection with the B12 and the cheek it works so if you need a B B12 injection talk with talk with talk with your doctor and they can prescribe those to you um, one thing here, the sunshine, okay, the sunshine, 
I got this uh, bottle of vitamin D3. This was 600 soft gels. So I split half with my son. So yeah, that's what those look like. And so um, the recommended dose is take one soft gel, soft gel daily, preferably with a meal. Oh, this is bad. I just, you saw me close up this eye. Yeah, I need to go ahead and, and get an address so the VA can send me my glasses. This is terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, take one with day. I would take between three to five, like every other day. I, I really would because being a melanated woman, you know, we need the sun. We need that, that, that sun to, to charge us. And I actually had a doctor who agreed with me. And she was like, yeah, when you're out, you know, in the sun, it's not just your arms and your face. You have to have this part of your body exposed. This is the largest, you know, area on your body. Have this area exposed. I'm like, oh, you you mean to go out with the top off? She was like, girl, don't do that. <laughs> but yes, that's why I had such a good time here in Georgia last year because I was out in the sun every day. I was getting my sun on what others was complaining, it was too hot, it was too humid. I'm like, I'm living my best life with my gal in the water. But yeah, I I, I know that I knew this was place this was a place where I would be happy because you know with us and the vitamin D deficiency and that's where a lot of depressed mood and stuff come from. So yeah, this will hold you over, but ain't nothing like the real thing. Get out there and enjoy the sun. I also can't wait this year. I'm scared of snakes, but I'm going to actually be out here just, just barefoot in the grass, just grounding. Oh, I just can't wait. I'm, I'm just excited to see what the state of Georgia has to offer me. Um, I actually bought these yesterday. This is a pH alkalizer. I bought these at Walmart yesterday. I'm like, mm, that's new. So when I looked up the, um, the benefits and these look like they are, uh, let me call this a capsule. It's not a peel, it's a capsule. And um, so what it is, it helps, you know, convert those those free radicals in your body that stress, you know, pollution, those what's called antioxidants, stuff like that in, in your body have produced that results in like your joints hurting or, you know, poor sleep, a crappy mood. So I went ahead and I picked up these at Walmart. I've only taken, uh, I think, two so far. So I'm going to take two more. And it's probably too late. I'll probably take one tonight and then I'll be on a schedule to take two more tomorrow and give it some time to see what it does for me. But as Dr. Sabi said, you know, disease can't thrive in an alkaline environment. So love it. Okay. And my last but not least so far is iron. Okay. Iron. Um, I have iron deficiency. And <laughs> of course, you know, when I talked about the ginseng, and the really heavy menstrual cycle and stuff like that the low energy you have to make sure that you are replenishing yourself you know after you go through things like that guys too you know and especially you know my my folks who may you know be on like a, a vegetarian or a vegan diet we, we just have to make sure that we're getting all the nutrients and stuff that we need all right um i will leave a link for everyone to go shopping for those things i'll put that in the description after I, I, after I upload this video, I just want to say thank you to Khalifa, Isaiah, and Daryl. Thank you so much for your, your compliments. So I want to get to really quick. And if you have any questions, let me know. Once I get through this checklist real quick, we'll go through some, some more uh, comments and responses. I'll say just thank you so much for rocking with me. I know that many people will watch this in the future. That's one, that's one thing I make videos for is if I upload it today, I hope that it's still relevant, you know, years from now. And at any time of day when someone is, is searching. You know, so keep on with your comments, your positive feedback, all kinds of good stuff because people watch, watch my videos and I'm like, thank you. But people read the comments and a lot of friendships have been, been made through the comments and then connect with me on my social media platforms. We all start talking and find out we're all like-minded people. And yes, this is how we, we, we build our communities and stuff. Shout out to Art Kathy and Chief Montana. If you want to get some herbs, you know, me, I have a lot of stuff in capsule form and stuff like that. But if you want to get the herbs, um, House of Imotep and uh, reach out to Art Kathy. Subscribe to her channel, okay? She'll have all the links and subscribe to her on, on, uh, on Facebook. She has been great 
and helping me be just unapologetic and we're now in the same state same city so oh just wait until i meet her y'all gonna know about it when, when we connect oh my gosh i'm december 1st and she's december 3rd oh we, we about to get it <laughs> she has been my inspiration my encouragement all this time i just wish i could be i wish that i could just be on some not give a fudge stuff just like her but i'll get there one day i'll get there one day and I just want to say real quick, thank you to everybody else, everybody who has been there for me, whether it was a positive comment on YouTube, just subscribing, you know, um, connect with me on social media platforms, a phone call, a text. I can't say I did this on my own. Other people were selfless and, you know, giving me resources, a shoulder to cry on, an ear to vent to, you know, helping me get through my tough times. And that's what you need. I'm naturally a, 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 a extrovert, but you know, tough, tough situations and shitty, oh, I said a cuss word, crappy environments, you know, <laughs> have turned me into a, a introvert, a loner. But while I was a loner, you know, physically, being able to connect with, with others via the internet and stuff and social media helped me get that extrovert side out. So thank you to everybody who was there for me because it was some days where I was doing the ugly cry and, you know, those who saw me do the ugly cry and, you know, I may have been all of them in my emotions. They still love me the same and encourage me, you know, to keep on doing great things. So that's why I'm here to give that to somebody else. I can't just, just, just sit here and hoard all the goodness and the support. I got to share that with other people. So if there's any way I can be of assistance to you, you know, just to be a great sister to you, don't hesitate. Definitely reach out and let me know. So like I said, it's okay to be a loner as long as you're doing something productive, okay? <laughs> Don't just be a loner and you're engaging in escapism, you know, where you're doing excessive drugs, illegal drugs that'll get you in a bad situation, and then you'll be an extrovert in jail, you know, you don't want to do that, okay? Um, alcohol. Alcohol and drugs are depressant, okay? So... You may think, you know, drinking a whole 12 pack or, you know, taking shots of what, what is it? Um, Red Bull and vodka and stuff may make you feel good, but you're going to crash lower. It's a depressant. You're escaping for a little while. You have to address the problem and you have to do it with your right mind. And that's why the supplements and things like that and the herbs and eating right, you know, staying active, being pr now notice I, I, I didn't say just do something because people go do stuff like. Another escapism is reckless sex, okay? And then next thing you know, you're depressed because you're in child support court or you got a disease or a virus or something. So don't just do shit. Don't just do stuff, you know, be productive, okay? Don't indulge in dangerous behaviors, you know, eating. I will admit, I'll admit it to y'all right now. My worst eating habit is I would eat like the cup of noodles. <laughs> That's my thing. That is my thing. And I even got to a point where, you know, I'll jazz it up. Like, yo, I even have the, the, the video on here. I'm like, yo, we're going to jazz up some ramen. But, <laughs> but I know that I can only do that at certain times because all that sodium, you know, spikes up the blood pressure. So, yeah, <laughs> you just have to, you know, just be very mindful of what you're doing to make sure that you're you're not destroying yourself in the process the, the point of this is is to you know stay resilient and avoid you know depressed moods and things like that but you want to take care of yourself you have to be selfish because you are important okay um also too if you're a person that are and you're noticing these things as someone that you care about like if this person used to um let's say if the i, I know the, the the brothers on here Y'all love y'all cars, okay? If you know a brother who his car is just always shiny, you know, his car never even have a piece of bird crap on it. But then you you see brother and it's all bird crap on it, it's mud on it. Somebody that puts a shopping cart into it and he don't care, you know. Yeah, you might want to say, hey, 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 brother, what's going on? You know, and that's that, that those kind of dangerous behaviors to look for. There, there could be some, something else going on. Um... What was it? It was something that I wasn't doing that somebody had picked up on. I think my son, he picked up on it. And he, you know what? I, I love our children. I love our children. 
my son, he's the only person in this world that has been so close to my heart, distance-wise, and also time. He's been right here under my heart. You know, nobody else has been there. And one day he looked at me. Well, I think that, that we were video chatting or talking. No, he texted me, and that's why it stuck with me. He's like, Mom, I noticed that you've been very sad lately. What's going on? Oh, and then he also said, I noticed you've been really sad since I've been away. You know, and I'm like, wow, he even sees it, you know. So that's when I knew I had to make a change. So make sure you pay attention to your loved ones. And still to this day, I kind of kick myself at times because that officer I told you that have have, have passed away, um, I had went to a different precinct. And I didn't, didn't really see him that much. I saw him... One time we had court, because he had roasted me for my court outfit. He roasted the hell out of me. But like I said, at the time, I was in a relationship. But we had made a promise that we'll take our children to uh, Chuck E. Cheese. I'm like, yeah, I got a, a bunch of coupons where we can go. But I never followed mm -hmm. through with it. And I, I kick myself because I'm like, wow, I should have kept, kept up with that. You know, I could have been that person that he talked to. Or, you know, I just, it's always the what ifs. But you don't want to do that. You just want to now... Pay attention to, to, to people around you and really, you know, watch out for them and just express them that, that they mean a lot to you and the world needs them, okay? Um, be, if not, being that person that someone can rely on, and, and if you tell someone, yo, I'm there for you 24-7, call me whenever, here's my number. Really be there 24-7. Don't just be like, yo, I'm sleeping or, you know, this is a bad time or yes, my deal you can call. Don't be that person because you're letting somebody down and you could have been that person that they felt as though they had nobody else to reach out or they, they, they could have called like 15 other people before you and you just happen to answer the phone. Be there for that person. Be be there for them. If they say, look, I, I, I need you, um, you know, I just, I don't know what to do. Look, okay. You, you may have obligations like, yo, I got to get my kids off the bus at, when I get off work or I got some overtime or I got class. But once I get done, I'm coming straight over. Maybe some, somebody just, just just need your energy. There's been times where I, I had, to, well, not been times, but always I could have had my, my issues going on before I clocked in. But my issues don't matter because I'm clocking in. I got to deal with everybody else's issues and solve them within this certain amount of time. Or, you know, when, when friends and family reach out, it's like, whoa, okay, I'm going to be there for you and help you get through this. What I'm going through, is we will talk, talk about that later, but I'm here for you. So definitely be that person, okay? Um, What is another one? Don't fit in. Like I said, be selfish. You are unique, okay? Don't fit in a toxic, toxic situation. Just realize the place is toxic. You have value. Well, here's one thing. Don't fit in. And this is a very good acronym that I learned from the, from the training today. You are an MVP, meaning you have meaning, value, and purpose. Okay, so then again, you are an MVP, meaning, value, and purpose. So I always say know your value, know your worth, and know that you can stand on your own. That's one of the reasons, you know, I don't want people to feel in this video that I'm shunning their religion. Especially now, you know, that I live in the Bible Belt, you know, you know, I'm, I don't know, I'm just in the mix. But... You have everything you need to survive your situation, to make it through. You have resources around you, you know, just know how valuable you are, okay? You don't have to lower yourself to get acceptance. You don't, and you should never let other people define you, okay? Define yourself, okay? Define yourself. Be selfish. Even if you take... um a dry erase marker, a dry erase marker, and write your motto on the mirror. Write something positive to yourself. It can have bad words in it, but as long as it's uplifting to you and it gets you to smile and you and it builds up your self worth and your confidence, you got to do that, okay? But don't fit in. Don't lower yourself. Don't ignore your needs and your wants as long as they're legal, you know, okay? Don't be doing illegal stuff. I'm like, oh, I, 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 I need this to improve my, my self-worth. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> and um, like I said, your value, your meaning, your value, your purpose. When I look at my, my end life goal, I want to observe my 100th birthday. And that, that goal happened when I was dispatched to a retirement community and I met this beautiful, beautiful black woman she was a hundred, I believe she said she was a hundred and one. 
living by herself in the assisted living and she was so proud of it like y'all don't don't roast her okay but she was so proud of it she was like i am i'm 101 and there is my hand written letter signed certificate from president barack obama she was so proud of it and i'm like whoa you want to get one of those when you come 100 so <laughs> but my goal is to not live is not only to live to, to be 100 plus but to also have contributed, you know, decades upon decades of benefit and value to, you know, those who I come in contact with. So, you know, my, my goal is service, my 100th birthday <laughs> and beyond, but to also do it to where, you know, I'm, I'm you know, self-sufficient. Okay. I know that I have to have great relationships with my son, my grands, my great grands and my community, because you can't make it to a hundred on your own. Okay. You're going to need some help. And hopefully I, I, I have a good husband and we're both a hundred plus, you know, we sexy living it up. That'd be great. But also, like I said, service to my community, betterment of those that I come in contact with. I want to make everyone who I come in contact with better than how I found them, as well as every environment. And um, to close this out, the training today, it was so good. I really love this training. We close out with three things that we are grateful for. And on the slide, it said, what are three things that you are grateful for in the last 24 hours? But the um, instructor He's like, what are three things that you've been grateful for for the past uh, seven days? I put down this. Seven days. <laughs> and um, I really thought about that. Plus, I was the last person to go because I was, I was sitting in the back of the room. Because like I said, I can't see the freaking um, the slide or the PowerPoint if I'm sitting up close. I got to get my glasses from the VA. <laughs> so I'll sit in the back so I can see it. And by the time it, it got to me, I was going over everything in my mind about what I'm going to say. I changed a couple times before it got to me, but by the time I stood up, and I want you to do this, okay? Let me know three things that you are grateful for in the past 24 hours or seven days, six months, 90 days, year, or just period, okay? Let me know three things that you are grateful for. And those are the things that you have to live for, okay? Those are the things that, that give you purpose, meaning meaning value and purpose you are mvp so my first one was me i'm grateful for myself i really am grateful for myself because and like i said it sounds selfish but you should be selfish you really should you should be be, be very selfish because i'm grateful for myself because i've 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 allowed myself to be so teachable i don't know it all but I'm so teachable and in each environment, each person I encounter, each thing I come into, you know, shapes me in one form or another so that I become a better woman, you know, to provide that service, that betterment of, of, of my people. Um, I'm, because of me, you know, and things that I've allowed myself to learn is to be a better mother, sister, friend, you know, everything that I could be it's me and when i come into a situation i want to impact that situation so uniquely and positively that only taisha can do and i want you to know that when you come into a situation or you make you make a connection you're influencing that situation in a way that only you can no one else can do that you have your own experiences values things that that, that you've learned your experiences your training it's just your spin off things that makes you perfect for that situation. And um, the second one, now this was a little, a little, I don't know, but I was really, I put down, I'm really grateful for just hospitality. I really am. And I'm just really happy that, you know, people have allowed me to come into their life we are all on this this time this this time measurement and the time that you spend and give to someone you never get that back but you give it to that person or you devote it to that situation in hopes of a return on your investment so what others have instilled in me and given me you know, I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful for your time sitting here listening to me for an hour and nine minutes. I'm grateful for you, you know, helping me get to 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. You know, and 
things that people correct me on. Like uh, I had a brother, he corrected me on my, my video before this because when I was typing in my tags for that video, uh, I saw that wonder was spelled wrong. It means, you know, travel, a passion for travel was spelled wrong, but it ranked higher than wanderlust, the right way to spell it. So I went with wanderlust. I'm like, okay, let's let's see if we can get myself into, into the search engine and get this, this video watched. And that was just so funny, but you know, I welcomed his, he was like, hey, you spelled that wrong. But I'm like, I know, but you know, it's a way to do it, to get the, the video out there. <laughs> but I just, I love everybody who takes the time to invest in me and I'm grateful. And um, the, 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 the last one I put on, I'm really grateful just to be here. I'm, and, and when I say here, yes, presently I'm, I'm in Georgia, but for the last seven days, I've been everywhere from Washington State, Oregon, California, Arizona, New Mexico. Oh, what came out from New Mexico? Texas? Texas, Oklahoma, <laughs> um, Arkansas, Tennessee, then Georgia. You know, I'm just grateful. But then everybody else who was around me, who called me you know it was it felt so good when people called me while i was on the road hey taisha i was thinking about you shout out to fallon fallon if you're watching fallon is right here with me in this this same same city and she's been calling me every single day how are you doing what are you doing you need anything my mentor from virginia um carolyn she's here she flew down uh yesterday she's here to help me get adjusted and also to introduce me to her friends who are here as well this weekend meeting up with art kathy you know just everybody has been so great i'm just grateful i really am i'm grateful for everything i'm just such in a good place right now and you know if there's ever a tough day if tough days are going to come i'm not saying that i found you know heaven that i'm immune to you know stuff going on but i have enough right now and if you write write those things down to keep track of them that's why i take pictures or videos of almost every situation or i'll vlog so i can go back to something and just remember those those good feelings and just know that i am you know supported i'm cared for and you know just stuff like that to get you all just warm in the inside and stuff you know things like that <laughs> so go here uh thank you again uh and from va for putting that that link down for every king i want to say thanks to my beautiful sister thank you so much to a king i got a king on here um my sister latifah from jersey i love you so much i'm grateful to lord for allowing me to wake up this morning yes because each day you are just really needed you are loved people count on seeing you you know we need you so that's such a beautiful thing and i'm grateful for my son and my mother yes family like i said family is just so much and i'm learning more and more of my family if you want to check out my video here it's like how facebook helped me find my family i talk about my essex side of the family and i'm going to you know learn more about them because they're they're all here in um alabama georgia florida and we have an amazing story be, behind our, our last name and then also my maternal side we're figuring all that out it's just beautiful and now that i'm here my sister you know with her travel wings i'm coming down there to see you you know it's just really good like everyone everybody wants to come down here now because i was like don't come to washington don't come here the only person that came up there was was my mom man my, my mom likes going anywhere she's like oh i'm coming up that move up here i'm like i'm gonna leave you here lasagna mcdonald i actually thought about you i was so mad at myself so i'm like i could have when I was I was on, I was only in Nevada for a hot second, but I'm like I should just drove, drove up to Vegas to see you. But we are gonna do a video because uh, I've read your book and it's in my household uh, goods. So my household goods actually got they're they're here today, but I'm like um I haven't like secured a place to live yet. So once um I unpack your book, I'm gonna introduce you to my navy sister lasagna mcdonald make sure you subscribe to her channel her channel and meeting her inspired me because and also too if you put down um a link for your book as well can you please put a link for your book i met her through art kathy um lasagna mcdonald retired what was it 24 years in in the navy she is oh my gosh her story from how she was where she was but like she is just this amazing woman who has completed marathons just wow just 
a, a fitness guru, if that's appropriate to say. Like when when it's times where I'm watching her and she has her her upload. She did, she did the 12 days of fitness in December. I was watching her 12 days of fitness. I'm like, yes, I want to do this. If you're looking for a way to you know just start a program to get in shape, but also her story on running one bit at a time, one step at a time. And that's how, you know, I address everything. Now, I can hear her in my mind one step at a time. Driving across country, I didn't say, oh, my gosh, I have t over 2,700 miles and 40 miles on the road. I'm like, you know what? I'm going from here to there. That's nine hours, 700 miles. There to there. That's 600. There to there. That's this much. There to there. That's that much. So it took me five, four days of driving, but five days of travel. And, um, yeah, like, the right people will come around you and you build this, this circle. So... I'm excited. 10,000 subscribers. That is a milestone, like a mug for me. So um, if you have a channel or you have a product or something, I really want to, you know, do how um, the video idea with um, with Melvin and Danae. Oh, I could talk about them all day long. Melvin and Danae and me and Carolyn, where we talk about your platform and things that can help, you know, our subscribers definitely reach out to me. Email me taisha.essex at gmail or info at taishaessex.com. Send me an inbox message on social media. You can hit me up in the DMs, slide in the DMs, <laughs> and let me know. But I definitely want to get more information out there because I just want to help provide resources and also answers, but also talk about things in our language. There is a way that that people can absorb information. I hate when people like read PowerPoints to me or say, you know, I'm like, well, just give me information. I'll go, go read it later. Now, if I got questions, we'll talk. But you have to speak my language, you know, and a lot of people are like that as well. And I like speaking in your, in your language of coming to you where you are, you know, and also learning more. I don't know it all. I don't know anything. I'm just out here feeling my way around because it's always said, you know, um, I think it was uh, Erica Badu lyric, um, the man that knows something knows that he knows nothing at all. You know, <laughs> I love that. So, yeah, I'm like, I don't know. I learn from everybody else and I just share what I find out. But I am not going to take up too much of your evening. I just want to say thank you so much for, you know, the milestones you helped me get accomplished. I hope this video helps someone. If you want to share it with someone, tag them in here. But also we'll continue to post resources and links. I'll put some in the description. If you're watching the replay of this, go ahead and link it in the comments and we will continue to help each other. But just, just know that you are loved, you are welcome. And like people need you, we need you here. And your problems don't last always. Um, it was a leadership conference I went to with, uh, what is his name? Lieutenant Colonel Danny, Mc, Danny McKnight from the movie Black Hawk Down. And he was also in that situation in Somalia. And um, he said that there's no such thing as bad days. There's tough days and not so tough days. And I, I carry that with myself. It's not a bad day. It's just a tough day. But you will get through it. Just know that I love you and those around you love you. But love yourself, okay? All you got to do is wake up. And like I said, be, be self. I love that, that Kendrick Lamar song, I love myself. So say it to yourself every day. Play it. Have it as your ringtone. But, but be selfish. Love yourself, okay? I uh, thank you for watching. I welcome you to connect with me on my other social media platforms. Email me. Um, if you want a postcard, just uh, email me, inbox me your address. Um, I have some really cool ones from Route 66. And yeah, I just, I'm so happy. Like, I really am at a good place. And I hope that this is contagious to you. And we, we, we share happiness and positivity and no coronavirus. I don't want none of that. So. <laughs> I will catch y'all in the next video. Thank you again to uh, Ed from VA, Mr. 757. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for your comments. And I just want you to stay encouraged. And I will see you on the next video.